Okay, so this is another episode, a sixth episode of Lunch Plus, and today we're actually going to be watching myself. At the beginning of the series, uh, I said that one of the main reasons I'm doing this Lunch Plus series is that I want to help myself improve at R Plus because I was generally a weak R Plus player, and I still kind of am, but I, I'm getting better. And the reason I want to put this up is that uh, I feel like this is an R Plus where I go against a competition that is better than my own competition, right? But using the lessons learned from the previous five R plus videos, I think I'm able to pull ahead. So I'll, I'll say ahead of time, I do win this R plus. But the reason I win this R plus is because of lessons learned from the previous five R plus videos that I've done. In the first video, we learn, you know, you should always use your forces and concentration and understanding your opponent helps you decide what your plan of action is. In the second R plus, we learn that making assaults from multiple flanks into one concerted effort is actually really good at disorganizing the enemy, as Fabulous Rug showed. In the third R plus we saw, I believe, Volsky, he showed that even if you win your initial engagement, you should be careful about the greed because even if you win your initial engagement, if you don't consolidate those leads, you can end up losing in the long term. Then we saw Scaffa showing even if your opponent has things that outclass you, if you can get the engagement to happen in peace and then use your unit's abilities really well, then you can win those engagements individually and win the overall engagement even if the units themselves are better than you. And then the last one we saw Crazy, who showed if you have an information advantage over your opponent, you should leverage that advantage as to the maximum to win that engagement. So let's see if we can put those lessons to use here. I start with an P3 and a Ken Krad, and I believe I end up calling in this Ultra and a half pack right away. Uh, the reason that I go for the P3 is that Ken Krad is an interesting faction that usually it's a jockey specialist, right? You, you bring on your unit and one job to do, and doesn't that job. Tank goes to tanks, and others to tanks. Assault Grants kill infantry, you know, things like that. Like, you have, or an Ice-T, really only kills infantry. The Pants 3 is unique in that sense, that Pants 3 is one of the two general use things that he has. Now, it merely won't kill other tanks very well, but it still will, will still hurt them. It won't destroy infantry like an armored Ice-T, but it will still hurt infantry. So it gives a kind of flexibility in the opening that things don't usually have. And of course, the Assault Grant and the half is a staple, because if you see a full up in the Assault Grant and the half is a great way to get rid of that support weapon. So, we right away see area. So we have two things happening right now because we see this very carrier in the early games and we actually do see an ATG. So there are two lessons right away. Number one, from the lesson with XC, we remember that if you know your opponent and you know the playstyle, you can search your effort and you can make an attack based on the playstyle. So we have area here and we know area is not a very aggressive player so we can probably, especially with this MG and ATG, we can expect it to sit in a good spot and try and wait for you to come to them. Uh, the other thing we have here is the lesson we learned from the uh, replay of Crazy, we know he's full pop. He's all on field. He's not going to change what he's bringing on, which means I can respond to him, but he can't respond to me. So we're going to try and leverage that information to an advantage for us by calling in something to deal with this. Now, here's another thing, though. This is where I say this is a kind of a bad engagement for me right now, even so. An RR and an ATG is more, a squad of RRs and ATG is more than enough to deal with an assault friend squad. I mean, our Sultan's got a Panzer III, right? Because the Panzer III's got unscared P4 armor, it's only got about 300, maybe 350 health, which is two ATG shots, or like an R volley and an ATG shot. It's gonna go down. Um, in addition to that, an bar airborne rifle squad with an HMG is also more than enough to deal with a half track with an assault grant, to be honest, because one volley of RRs and one hit with ATG again will take that out. And if so, I can't use the units I have on field and start. Even if I push them at the same time, one of them is going to die too soon to have any meaningful effect on this engagement. So I need to find a way to leverage this information I have to get the best calling on. So, from the information on leverage, I say, okay, this MG is going to be an issue for these assault units. So I need to find a way to get this right, rid of this MG if possible. So, I end up bringing on two squads of vanilla pegrins, if I recall correctly. So, let's see what's going on here. Another thing I did, I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but one thing I did do is I, oh, this P3 I can do, but you notice know, so I sent the uh, assault gun and the half track to the far right, the reason I did that was there was a jeep here, so it probably has seen this P4, I mean P3, but it hasn't seen this, so I know I have the information mentioned that he doesn't know how this assault gun with half track for yet, right? So, I want to, I need want to leverage that, so I'm probably going to, I know that I want to send the P gun uh, with the half track into the engagement as soon as possible. And yeah, as you can see with the call in timer, I am sending uh, the pegrims in right away, uh, calling two pegrim squads in right away. Ready. So I'm making a wide flank here. So the plan clearly right now is I want to make a concerted push from multiple flanks, which is less than one from rug. So 
what I mean by that, I want these pigments to get into the battle as soon as possible. So what I do is I sprint them right away from spawn, right? They're already sprinting. The reason I do sprint is because there was a patch change a while ago that the suppression bonuses were removed from pigment sprint. But at the same time, the slowdown after the sprint was removed as well. So you may as well just move, use the sprint to spawn right away if you don't have anything else on these pigments. And I don't. They're just vanilla pigments. <clears throat> so the plan right now is that I want to send this IHT on a wide, wide plan. Hold on, let me use a... <coughs> Is it very simple here? On a wide wide flank and make an attack uh, around here. Or rather, that's not what I want to say. I want to make an attack uh, around here. And whatever I find, whether I find the HMG or the ATG, I want to do uh, make this movement and find that ATG or the MG. I'm not really that particular on which one I find I want to take out, but both can work. The idea is as soon as the a, the, the idea is that as soon as the half track makes uh, the move, I want to bring uh, I want to bring well, can't that. I want to bring the uh, Panzer three in from this direction, and then use them to attack through here. And now why through here? Uh, there's a good reason for that, and the reason being, we have a nice shot blocker here that the Panzer three can play around with. We have a nice shot blocker here that the IHT can play around with here and here. So I have places to hide if things don't turn out my way, right? So if I see that something's going wrong, I can use these shot blockers to deal with either of these. And hopefully in the long term, uh, we'll have the, pan the Panzer Grenadiers arrive here at some point and attack from this direction. So I'm hoping that if the timing works out pretty well, I can take out an early support weapon and then use, if it's MG, I can use that, the few guns coming in late, to make the attacking push uh, through here. Right with the Pagan squads. If I take the ATG out first, then I can push really hard with the Panzer three into here and take out the MG. And and if things go really really bad or it just looks like a bad engagement, I can use these shot blockers uh, to reassess what I'm going to do. So that was the plan here. So let's see how it works out. So the IHT engages right away, uh, but unfortunately it does run to these airborne rifles right away. But they they don't have the AR squad five the RSV behind it, so I take two R shots. So I'm really worried. Right so I'm thinking right now, okay, they've seen this IHT, so the, the, the ATG is probably going to be sitting right around uh, here and going to be point, pointing right here. So, but because I expect the ATG to be pointing that way, I decide to start bringing the Panzer III into the flank here. So I begin the engagement kind of early because my P-Grands are still pretty far away. They're still here. They're still sprinting towards the engagement. But let's see how I assist. But what I do right away, though, as you'll see, is I take the assault grins out of the IHT, and I'm hoping to bait a few more shots with this IHT from the RR so my PG can come in. And that's what does happen. And I notice right away this this uh, MG is really poorly placed. ATG, as I stick the bullet from here, but because I've activated the sprint, so good use. So this is a scaff. So now I'm thinking scaffa style here. I'm I see an isolated ATG, and I see no support for it. So I'm gonna do everything possible to take this ATG out alone, and possibly drag some units into this. And if I can do that, I can isolate the MG in the RR squad. So I'm, right now I'm going to what we learned from Scathers who plays. Even though Aerie has a better composition, I found his units isolated. So I'm gonna want, I'm trying, what I'm going to try and do now is pick them off one by one while they're isolated, and maybe drag units out of position. So, that so, I've, so again, this IHT baits some shots in RR. It's like a feature shooting right here. And now what you'll notice is, I'm... This is working out really well for me because what's happened is this. To get these annotations correct here. Okay, I got there. I got there, fam. You also notice that this squad of bar riflemen is now diverting themselves away from the MG and the RRs to try and engage these P Grands uh, before the ATG goes down. This is a foolish decision because uh, these P these 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 assault guns are going to kill this ATG before these bar riflemen get anywhere close. But what the major thing he's done by doing this is. He's made this P3 uh, a real problem for his MG and RRs, right? Because there's an R squad here that's now unprotected by anything, right? And this MG squad is getting flanked by this P3. And what's really concerning uh, for area at this point is that these P grins are coming here and these bar riflemen are not going to be around to deal with them. But these bar riflemen are going to be stuck around here doing fuck all while the P grins arrive here. So this is working out really well for me. So we piecemeal the ATG, and through Area's volition, we're gonna isolate his bar rifleman. And by having the bar rifleman isolated, we're gonna end up isolating his RR squad. So let's see if you, what how this turns out for Area. He pops the suppression fire really early as well, so he's wasting ability here. 
and now the PP comes in and we swap the R spot right away. But the thing is, why does this MG turn around behind both the both friends? The P friends come in right behind, and now these bar riflemen. So we see right away. So the MG is down, right? The MG is down, but this is here. This is down, but these riflemen over here, if they were right here behind this green cover, uh, they can probably at least suppress or take out these vanilla pegrams so this RR squad here can keep this P3 to, from being too aggressive, right? And probably these assault grins are still going to be kind of late to engagement. I mean, sure, the assault grins will probably try and attack the bar rangers, but if they, I mean, the bar, the bar airborne rifles, if they had suppression fire up, they probably could stop this, and this engagement would still be a wash. But because we've got these isolating, the ATG is isolated, the ATG being isolated, but the bar rifle being isolated, the bar rifle being isolated led to the air, uh, airborne being isolated here and the MG being isolated here. We've been able to use the uh, the things from the scapa to basically take this composition apart one by one. <clears throat> so now now we're in the next part of the situation. We want we know we've won this case and we want to now we want to learn the lesson of this also. We want to consolidate our position. So we need to make some key decisions here about how we consolidate, right? So do we want to chase? No, we don't want to chase because we learned from Volsky that being too greedy, especially close to spawn, is never a really good idea because if it turns out poorly, you can lose all the gains you've gained here. So the decision we want to make now is do we want to recruit this MG or destroy it and then do we want to recruit this APG or do we want to destroy it? And I decided to keep both because I realized this is another lesson for Casey, right? We use our information advantage to bring a competition on leverage against area, but area now has information advantage on us. He knows what I have and he knows what he can bring on to Kander what I have. So I assess, look here, I don't have that much energy Answer, against, we'll another against another a large AT blob, which I expect everyone to be coming, but it's, you know, I don't have a lot of AT either, so I decided to take the AT result, so I end up recruiting both things, right? So I recruit both things and I set them up, I'm going to have this MG probably pointed in this kind of direction here, and this ATG I'm going to probably put behind to try and put, cover the MG, and I'm going to probably, probably back up the units from cover. Now here's the thing that uh, we learned from Rod, like we should probably be taking a central consolidated position here, so you can see that's a mistake by me, but it ends up working out because the airborne uh, end up attacking from the same direction as the force. He's not in the same area, but he, attempts, he doesn't try to change his direction of attack. Because everyone gets suppressed, and the assault guns are going to go in, and they finish off the airborne to the Vanilla Pegans. You can see this engineer squad just hanging on the south side, so a few people can go back and follow through the attack. So yeah, these assault guns are going to finish off the airborne. P4 gets a nice shot, P3 gets a nice shot, and it's going to P3 is going to think of whatever's going to happen. And these airborne get finished off. Why these assault guns? And these assault guns are up to 10 kills. I believe we got 10 kills. And the Panzer 3 is going to be able to half of them. Probably. And now we're moving everything back to uh, consolidate a position in probably this kind of general area right around here. Using this green cover here, using this house right here. Have this MG, this uh, gun has been And the R plus is basically over this point. We'll see here that the ATG did work out because we do get a nice shot into the quad here. So we're moving everything is getting moved back to uh everything's getting moved back, so we're gonna see the MG probably set up around either in this green cover on this house right here. The little grins and grins can probably be put in these houses for some scouting, and the little grins are probably gonna be sitting around somewhere back here. I don't know where you'd want to put them, I don't remember. But that's where and the P3 got out of this engagement with a fairly decent amount of health with seven kills. And we have an APG and we have and we're we're dandy here. So you could see the lessons we used in these previous R, uh, five R plus games, and we, how we applied those in this situation to make this an R plus win, right? So it, it, even if you're in a situation where your unit composition isn't 100% ideal, you can still use the lessons from these R plus matches we've seen to really still find an edge in these engagements, and that's hopefully the lesson, uh, the lesson lessons that I've learned, and I hope that's the lessons that you guys take away from these R plus uh, videos as well.